Ooh, welcome everyone to the Bet US NBA Pick Show. I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green with Chris and Noops talking hoops here. Uh, I'm I'm live from Vegas. Going to be out here watching some March Madness, but ton of madness in the association last night. Some crazy poster dunks. I mean, Noops. I felt like uh, I was anytime I opened up Twitter, it was just uh, a different angle of that uh, of the ant dunk. It was uh, it was a crazy dunk. Well, I love people that are trying to discredit it in some way because, like, he he didn't push his hand with the ball through the rim. I just want to tell everyone, it's like, oh, he threw it in the basket. Shut up. That is so incredibly impressive. I don't care what you think about his hand. Touch, whatever stupid qualification process you have, go to hell. That's one of the most impressive things you'll ever see on a basketball court. The reactions to people, the fact that he dislocated a finger doing it. Um, John Collins, I hope he's okay. And again, like, as embarrassing as for somebody, anybody that's played basketball with real athletes, I find that a lot of people like getting dunked on stupid. Turns out they've never actually played with anybody who could really dunk. It happens. You got to get in front of people. You got to try to challenge that stuff. And sometimes it goes wrong. Yeah, I, I got dunked on uh, once in a rec league game. I think we were uh, not in the in, in the quite uh, the right seating of the rec league uh, organization out in LA. And uh, yeah, it's it's not the best feeling, but at least it shows you play defense. I mean, so many guys make that business decision of like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to get dunked on. Like, come on, close out. No out. way. Uh, but Ant Hans jumping, I, I don't know if, like what happened. I feel like since Carl Anthony Towns went out, he added like six inches on his vertical because I feel like it's just been a ton of highlights of him like jumping, either crazy dunks, crashing into the backboard. Like he's kind of been a monster. How are we doing, Chris? How was your How was your night in the NBA? It was good. It was good. Yeah, I learned. Um, I think it was in tenth grade. You know, I'm a Six two white boy who can't dunk, and uh, you know I was pretty good at basketball back in the day, my guys. Like we can, we can, we can go to the you know street hoops in Vegas when we all hang out sometime, and I'll show you. <laughs> However, I learned really quickly that I'm I'm probably not hanging with like NBA and Division One players, and that's like the kind of athletes that like Anthony Edwards is. Like that was wild to watch. I saw someone tweet out, "I hope that John Collins is okay," and I'm like, "Did he break his leg?" Like what happened to John Collins? Nope, <laughs> just Anthony Edwards nuts were in his face, like six feet up in the air. So. That was awesome to watch. Pretty okay night for me last night. Two and two. It is what it is. I've had a lot of those lately. Uh, just, uh, you, know, you know, I think I'm struggling with the motivational edge because you have some teams who look very motivated and then they'll just take a night off. You know, picking a lot of the wrong ones as far as that goes. But remaining relatively in it even, but I'm trying to chase Alex here who is stacking up with a lot of picks <laughs> on today's show again. So we will yes. see who ends this season on top. Yeah, we have uh, a jam-packed show with a ton of picks coming off uh, another winning night, and that even includes uh, a loss. Uh, Shark was on Utah there, and if you saw the way that thing ended, that was <laughs> oh god, Nathan okay. Daniels just chucking it. Yeah, he really. Uh, depending on what you got the out. number at, it seemed it seemed like most people who had Utah had the seven and a half or seven, and then that last uh, three was just a backbreaker. But uh, still, still a winning night for the show, and let's uh, let's keep the momentum going. I will take a quick look at the record books and get to the picks because we got a bunch of them. I cracked the century mark. Uh, only a couple games of five hundred, but uh, yeah, but swinging back in the right direction. Noops with a nice uh, above uh, five hundred uh, lead here. But I, I'm I'm gonna get hot again. I I was up there and uh, you know getting warm again. Show looking uh, looking good. Twenty games above five hundred. Gonna continue to add to that on today's card. And we got a we got a bunch of them here. Starting off. With a game which uh, you'd probably only watch if you're betting, Houston Rockets at the Wizards. Rockets lane nine and a half. Wizards plus three thirty five on the money line. Total sitting at two twenty seven and a half. Oh man, I I couldn't get to anything here because the Wizards have had moments where they look okay, but they've kind of been worse at home. Uh, I guess on the on the side of the Rockets, I would be a little concerned about the Rockets lane that many points in general, but I do think the Rockets defense matches up pretty good against the Wizards. So I think if you're, if you're taking the Rockets to cover, you're imagining a, a lower scoring game where the Wizards don't do much offensively. And I'm looking at your guys' picks and it seems like that's what you're doing here as well. We'll start here with you noobs. Uh, what do you like in this matchup? Well, Sean, I'm sure no one happier than you that Denny Avdia is out tonight. <laughs> he will not be playing. Oh, we have I no was... Avdia props that you have to read. <laughs> I was going to say, why is Denny FD not listed on this? 
<laughs> yeah, he's out tonight. Tyus Jones continues to be out. And now you've got a Washington roster that all of a sudden looks worse than that Grizzlies roster from a few weeks ago where there yeah. was no Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson. I mean, I don't know who Jared Butler is. He's been playing basketball. He's apparently a wizard. He's going to be out there. Um, someone named Justin Champagny. I don't know. I'm not really sure what that is. Patrick Baldwin Jr. I just assume he is the nephew or cousin of one of the other Baldwins, you know, Alex, Stephen, Billy. I think there's a fourth one. I'm not really sure. But that's kind of where I am at this point. This Washington team, is just, this is bad. This is going to be really bad. It's going to be a lot of Jordan Poole. Uh, just nothing really good here to say about Washington. Their team total continues to sit at a 109. I think the market here just basing this number off a year's worth of Wizards lineups and scores where if you go back and look, Wizards totals tend to be very high. They push pace. They shoot a lot of threes, but I don't care how fast this game goes. I don't see them getting to this number, especially against the Houston team again that generally controls the pace. And as much as the Rockets are worse with that out for Shengun, defensively, they're much better. Shengun is not a good defensive player. Yeah. That brings Dylan Brooks into that power forwards lineup. They bring Amen Thompson into the first lineup, which again, good defensive player, good rebounder. So the Wizards tonight again we're not going to see any extra chances Houston cleans the board I think the Rockets will keep the pace low I don't see how the Wizards score even 105 let alone 109 so give me the team total under yeah I mean to your point you we're entering key and peel territory with this roster when you lose when you lose a Denny Avdia and and as much as we joke like he's a big part of their offense and has been playing well it's not like they have the depth to to really replace him so uh things getting pretty thin there Chris how say you what do you like at this matchup yeah, this Rockets line opened up last night, I believe six and a half, uh, six or six and a half. I got it at seven and a half as it was it just it just rose very quickly. Um, and, you know, something that you can kind of call as a red flag when you see it in the marketplace, like sharper books out there, like, you know, Bet Online, Pinnacle. Uh, this number has been rising. There, there's a lot of juice on the Rockets tonight. And I think it's all for good reason, right? I mean, Noop's already said it all. This is a very banked up roster. I mean, if you like the Wizards tonight for some reason, who have four total wins at home all year, uh, you're counting on guys like Kyle Kuzma to have a big game, and he's nursing some kind of shoulder ailment. Jordan Poole is shooting 41% this season. You know, I think I think we've talked at length about how bad he looks, and then a bunch of no names, right? So this is just a really bad uh, Washington Wizards team right now. They showed some promise a few games ago, actually showed some effort, but the Houston Rockets have covered seven of their last eight. They've won their last five. They won seven out of the last eight, uh, or, or I'm sorry, six out of the last eight, I believe, or seven out of the last nine, something like that. The point is, Ime Yudoka has this team playing well. They are fourth overall in the NBA in their last eight games in net rating. Defense is really good, and their offense has also improved. Now, you look at their schedule lately, and it's against a lot of cupcake teams, but that's exactly what they're being presented with tonight, right? And they're just outside the play-in tournament, three games outside of it as it stands today. So they are fighting to get in and make a little bit of an impact. And you got a team like the wizards who can't play well at home or depleted, uh, you know, standing in their way. And they have, uh, they will continue to have a nice schedule too, uh, along the next 15 games. So the Rockets have a chance here. They're playing motivated. They're playing better basketball. Nine and a half is a ton of points for a Rockets team that hasn't been that good on the road this season, but it, it just all kind of adds up and leading up to the postseason with the added motivation is why it sits where it is. So I do think this is a double digit win for the Rockets tonight and I will take them a minus nine and a half. Yeah. I mean, you could just keep it as simple as uh, the wizards 10 and 21 ATS at home. Somehow they're one of these teams that's worse at home and they're, they're pretty bad. They're worse than the Hawks. I mean, remember like not too long ago, we kept talking about how historically bad the Hawks were ATS and they're worse than the Hawks at home right now. So lock it up for Chris on the Rockets minus nine and a half and lock it up for noobs on the wizards team total under one Oh nine. Um, moving over to the next game, we got the Hornets versus the Orlando Magic. Right now, Hornets catching 13 points, uh, plus 550 on the money line. Total sitting at 202 and a half. Yeah, this was another one where it's like, man, can the Magic really be laying 13 points? They've been playing a little bit better, but also, yeah, it's just so much. But then on the other side, do you really want to be on this Hornets team on the road? Uh, I don't. And then the magic have a much bigger game against the Pelicans coming up on Thursday. Uh, I couldn't get to anything, but uh, noobs, how say you in this matchup? Yeah, just 
a terrible basketball game. This is going to suck. Don't watch this game. I mean, I honestly would rather watch the Rockets-Wizards game. At least some weird stuff's going to happen here. I mean, it just seems like Charlotte, Brandon Miller's been getting better. Miles Bridges looks like he's, uh, you know, pushed himself toward maybe uh, getting to a point where he can get a real contract here. But uh, this Orlando team it should just swallow this Hornets team up and keep them from being able to do anything. At the same time, Orlando loves to just slow these games down, really grind them out. I think this is just going to be ugly, ugly basketball. Uh, again, if you like watching, you know, the 1990s, Knicks Heat games like I guess maybe there's not going to be as much violence in this game but it's going to look a lot <laughs> like that I mean the score here should be very low we're looking at one of the lowest totals of the year just above 200 and it makes perfect sense to me these two teams went well under 200 the last time they played so uh, not much for me here in the full game. Just a player prop I saw that I liked. Cam Thomas's rebound number, and I know uh, it's always tough to bet guards, um, you know, rebounding the ball here. But uh, just double checking the number I had here. Yeah, three and a half rebounds. A guy in Cam Thomas that again has done a really good job catching the ball on defense. As this Nets team continues to not be interested in playing defense, Thomas has been grabbing balls basically and kind of creating a fast break for himself. Um, three and a half. I had this closer to five, almost five myself. So I like that number quite a bit. It's a nice cheap bet or for a player prop. So give me Cam Thomas over three and a half rebounds. Let's see him get to four. Hopefully this will be easy. Chris, anything you like here in the, in Charlotte, Orlando? Yeah, again, watching the market a little bit, uh, you know, sports books aren't giving a lot of mercy here to the Charlotte Hornets. You know, I, I mean, at, at first I'm thinking this is a lot of points. You know, you got a Hornets roster that's been playing together for a little while now. At least their their new roster, you, you can call it 2.0. I'm not sure if it is 2.0. Uh, but, you know, not a lot of injuries and again, 13 points and they've been playing pretty solid defense. But then, uh, you know, sharp books like Bet US having no mercy, like Pinnacle, like Bet Online, it, it's remaining at 13 or 13 and a half and it's juiced. Uh, so I'm just a little skittish on, on, on taking the magic at that many points. But the magic are, are playing really good basketball right now. There's no denying it. Even though they're a, a young team, I think the fact that they are mostly all young. It has kind of, uh, you know, enhanced their team chemistry, right? Like, it's just like their attitude and their moxie in these games. But the only thing I don't like about it is obviously it's a game that they're expecting to win, right, against the Hornets. And so it might not be a very motivational spot for a total this low. It, it kind of automatically favors the underdog a little bit, right, because there's just not going to be a lot of points, so the gap is going to be a little less. So I lean Hornets. I still lean under because I do agree with Alice. I think this is just going to be a really bogged down, ugly game, and mostly because of the... Orlando Magic's defense, but the Hornets defense has been pretty damn good lately too. So I think we can expect a low scoring game. Can't take a under with the total as, as low, but I also lean Hornets. Yeah. I mean, uh, Orlando has been good against the spread as a home favorite, but this, I, I don't think they've had many lines where it's pushing 13 and that's where, it, that's where it gets a little wonky. Uh, Log it up for noops on the cam Thomas over three and a half rebounds. Next up, we got a uh, Pelicans versus the Brooklyn Nets in Brooklyn right now. Pels lane seven on the road. Nets plus 235 on the money line. Total sitting at 216 and a half. Again, this Nets team kind of bottoming out. Uh, they they seem like a bit of a mess. Uh, Pelicans, shout out to our boy Zion. Officially, I think he got a... <laughs> I think he's the only guy who's gotten a, um, you know, a new cycle on he's too fat and a new cycle that he's lost the weight. Uh, maybe he's on Ozempic. Uh, I, I, we haven't gotten the, uh, the full story yet on the, uh, on the Pelicans and Zion Williamson's weight loss, but the guy, I mean, just eye test. I think we were talking about on the show before the news officially came out that he dropped 25 pounds of something crazy, uh, since the all-star break, he looks slim down. He l- seems to be playing hard. Uh, Pelicans in general, I think are going to kind of be a dark horse here in the Western conference as things shape up, uh, seven on the road again, what's their motivation, but, uh, I'm kind of kicking myself. I see what you put in here, Alex. Uh, I'm kicking myself for not uh, having this one on my card as well, but what do you like here? Yeah, the Pelicans, it's it's very interesting. I will say for Zion, I was nervous when he was drafted that he would be too big. And that was just coming out of college. The NBA is not a place for big players. You look at guys like Sean Kemp, even guys like Yao Ming. Again, not just that he was tall, as heavy as he was. I mean, uh, you put, I think it's something like 10 to 15 times the weight of your body pressure-wise on your joints every time you jump. It's really tough. And then to put him in New Orleans, where everything is deep-fried. Oh, There's not yes. one single thing in that city you can eat. <laughs> they found a way to deep-fry guns. 
gumbo. I swear to God, I don't think you can get an orange that's not deep fried. It's unbelievable. So I get it. As someone that's been to New Orleans, it always comes back. I, the way I like to describe New Orleans is I fly in with a belt and fly home without needing a belt. Um, it, it's just really <laughs> tough. So it's nice to see him getting in shape. But I agree, Sean. This Pelicans team is going to be scary in the postseason. I think if you're the Clippers, you are just petrified of having to play this team in the first round. The Pelicans 3-1 and one against them, and I think that's what New Orleans is pushing for. They want to stay in this 4-5 or five matchup, try to get to 4 so they can stay home. But the theme all year, this Pelicans team has been incredible early in the game. First quarter, one of the best teams in the league. First half, arguably the best team in the league. First half, uh, just tremendous. They come out, they play real hard, and then they kind of just hold on to the lead and let and salt the game away. So I don't mind Pelicans full game here. I just worry about a little bit of late game shenanigans. We know the Nets, they're just in this weird space where even if they tank, they don't have their own draft pick. Uh, Houston does as part of the James Harden contract. So there's nothing for them to gain from even losing at this point. So a lot of these guys fighting for contracts. At the end of the day, I'll just try to keep it simple. Give me the Pelicans, who I Again, think this wing wins this game by a lot, but I'll just take the first half minus four. Yeah, and again, they're uh, right there, uh, neck and neck. Although, I mean, Boston in the first half has been insane. Boston's forty nine and eighteen, but Pelicans aren't too far back, forty one and twenty four ATS so far in the first half. So hard to fade that here, especially going up against the Nets team, uh, which just is seems like a pretty big mess. Uh, Chris, any thoughts on this matchup? Yeah, it's obviously Pelicans are pass, I think. Uh, but that's the reason why I'm kind of off of it, right? It's just like not not a very exciting game, kind of a sleepy interconference uh, game for the Pelicans on the road. And then you do have the Nets who, they, they look terrible right now. But again, every now and then they just have that game where they really step up and they play tough and they're at home. And I kind of like how they match up against the Pelicans. I know Pelicans had their way with them last time. But, you know, they're just a little smaller, a little more maneuverable like if they're motivated at all maybe they can catch the pelicans in a in a sleepy spot here so um you know no real thoughts on this one i think the line is right i think the nets are not a team that you can bet on but i will say pelicans are playing some extremely good defense lately so you know nets team total you know maybe something along those lines and what again should be a pretty uh the pathetic game overall i i just don't see a lot of points in this one even even 214 and a half seems a little high yeah, I mean the Brooklyn offense right now, uh not much to get excited about. So lock it up for noobs on the Pelicans in the first half lane four. Uh next up, <clears throat> we got the Dallas Mavericks versus the San Antonio Spurs. Mavs now lane eight and a half on the road against San Antonio. Spurs plus two ninety five on the money line, total sitting at two thirty three. I like the Mavs here in this spot. Um, it's interesting. Both are kind of coming off games where I would maybe look to fade them, but since they're both coming off kind of crazy uh, buzzer beater wins, I think maybe it cancels it out. Mavs are 14 and three ATS on the road as a favorite, um, but the eight and a half is is worrying me slightly because uh, Mavs haven't been playing. I wouldn't say lights out defense. Uh, and I, I just don't see any either side being really that interested in defense. But again, I kind of lean Mavs. I ended up getting the Mavs team total over 121. Uh, Spurs 25th in the league in points per game. And you just look, just look at the last three times they played. I mean, Mavs only had 116 last time, and that was a bit of an outlier. Before that, it was 144. Before that, 126. And there seems to be this uh, extra angle of Kyrie Irving during Ramadan. He seems, I, I don't have the advanced numbers, but he talks about the fasting somehow helps his focus and he's dialed in. I mean, you know, who, who knows with Kyrie, but he said he didn't eat or drink any food or water all day. Like that, that to me is bonkers. So you can still play about, I mean, the, the not eating thing is one thing, but Man, I, I I don't know. Maybe I'm just such a baby. Like uh, I I get I get quote unquote dehydrated all the time, and I, I couldn't imagine playing an NBA game without drinking water. That being said, I think the, this Mavs offense is going to be able to put up some points against the Spurs defense. That just uh, I think w when the Spurs get it done, it's when they kind of hang around in some games. But uh, Chris, I see on the the Mavs team total under. What well, tell me uh, tell me why you like the other side. Well, I'm a known Mavs hater a little bit, uh, so that's you know that's probably part of it. Maybe there's a little Big bit of bias in there, you know. <laughs> I, th I just think that the Luca and you know Kyrie show is gonna is gonna end in a bad way as it usually does because uh, then we get to the playoffs and the chemistry is a little weird. But they have looked pretty good recently. My problem with this game 
is, I mean, they're coming off three fairly big games, right? Against the Warriors, Thunder, and then the Nuggets. They got two wins in those three games. And, and that's, that's very good for the Mavericks. That last one in particular was obviously very impressive because they played close the whole game. Like it wasn't a fluke, you know, uh, they were, they were ready for the Nuggets in that one, but this is a, again, a sleepier spot for the Mavs. Luca is questionable in this one as well. He's just always has that hamstring thing going on. It makes sense that he would maybe sit this game out. And let's talk a little bit about Victor Wembanyama because this man, uh, again, he, he will defense, be the face yeah. of the NBA. In my opinion, he's 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 a really good player. I mean, he's getting four to five to six sometimes blocks a game, and he's changing the trajectory of many of these games, especially uh, from a scoring perspective. A lot of low scoring games for the Spurs right now. First quarter and first half, especially twenty seven and thirty seven ATS to the or I'm sorry, thirty seven and twenty seven ATS to the under in the first quarter, thirty eight and thirty to the under in the first half for the Spurs this season. And that's really starting to escalate. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of that from Victor Wembanyama at the start of these games. So, uh, you know, I don't know how motivated the Mavs are, especially after getting up for three games in a row. Uh, and then they are going to San Antonio. San Antonio is playing better. And the Mavs have only eclipsed this team total twice in all of March. I think that's eight games. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go with their under tonight. You know, I, 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 they can always explode. I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, mind or necessarily even disagree with Sean being on the spot. But... Uh, I, I have to take the under just because a lot of these other factors playing into it. We're gonna have a duel after this uh, episode. Mm. And now, hopefully, they don't score exactly one twenty-one because the last thing I need on my record is more pushes. I have eight pushes <laughs> uh, somehow this season, which feels like a, a, a bit of an outlier. Noobs, I'll kick it to you. Quick question: Do you recall what uh, Wemby's uh, Defensive Player of the Year odds were coming into the season? Because that must have like if he wins, people were talking about him as kind of like a dark horse defensive player of the year. What 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 are you saying, Chris? Oh, while while Alex is clearly researching, um, I think I have that. Let me yeah. just stay yeah. here for a minute. What? Yeah, Wemby recently saying that Rudy Gobert can have it this year, but then but then that's the end of that. I I bleep love that. Because, yes, you know, like Wemby is getting some moxie. He's getting an attitude. He knows how freaking good he is. And I love him, like, kind of starting to tr- talk a little trash, boys. So that's all. Like, I think he's going to keep on coming for it. And that's just further further evidence of, of his moxie right now. No, it, admittedly, I was a little skeptical. It's like, oh, this dude from France, is he really going to play defense? Does he really want to win? You know, maybe I'm basing that off of some uh, World War II documentaries, my, my take on uh, France's uh, desire to win. But, uh, <laughs> but like, what you happened? know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. There was the the, ma- the Maginot line or or whatever, but the like he he to your point, I like he's got some dog in him for for a uh, guy who you you could think would just rely on the fact that he's insanely tall and still somewhat coordinated at that height or not, you know, very coordinated. I guess um he he has some dog in him and him winning defensive player of the year would be a, a fun storyline. Noops, were you able to, to find that price? Yeah, it was actually it was pretty low. It was around plus uh it's around thirty to one, thirty-five to one. And if we are gonna comment on, I guess, uh preconceived French biases that we have, I'm sure Chris knows this as a fellow tennis better. It's hard to trust French tennis players. I'll just say <laughs> that. It's from time to time, everything seems to be going all right, and then all of a sudden there's just this implosion. I don't know what it is. There there just seems to be something. But I do. I love reading about Webb and Yama. Some of my favorite stories are about I can't remember how young he was, but at some point he decided he was going to be an NBA player and did stuff like watch every NBA press conference he could to not only learn English better, but to see what these guys were doing to just sort of lay this all out and understand it. And I think we're just getting someone that uh, for the first time, maybe even since LeBron James is someone that really understands what they're coming into, that is ready to be this person that is ready to be kind of the chosen basketball player and be in these moments and be prepared. He's done a great job. Again, even saying stuff like, oh, it would be nice to win more games and try to push the Spurs team a little bit. So uh, I love it. He seems to be uh, just a great player. I'm really excited that we get to watch him. And per my comment about big players, he's very tall, but he does seem to be kind of, uh, you know, the right balance here. Hope, I just hope he can stay healthy the whole time. So it'll be really fun. As far as this game goes, um, one of my favorite bets to make every single year, underdogs in the first quarter, the Spurs in the first quarter, one of the best teams, especially at home here. Dallas, a particularly slow starting unit. 
definitely expect that maybe to be even more so after the big win the other night. Again, on the road here against a bad team. I like San Antonio here in the first quarter, plus two and a half. And shout out to Shapeshifter in the chat. He nailed my player prop bet before we even got there. <laughs> Daniel Gafford. Um, say what you will about Dallas. One of my biggest concerns with them is it's March and we're adjusting lineups. March is not the time to be messing with starting lineups. You should have had this stuff figured out. Uh, one of the big changes they've made is Derek Lively has been moved to the bench. Gafford moved into the starting lineup. And a lot of the books here, I think, struggling to adjust from player prop perspective. His points number looks too low to me. His rebound number looks too low to me. Put it all together. Give me Daniel Gafford over 18 and a half points and rebounds. I had this closer to 23. Again, if you want to play the points, that's fine. You want to play the rebounds, that's fine. But I think there's even more value putting the two together. I show an edge on both of those numbers. So again, Spurs first quarter, I believe plus two, plus two and a half. Really, honestly, anything plus one or better looks good to me. I think that's a really nice bet. And then Daniel Gafford over 18 and a half points and rebounds. Lock it up for Chris on the Mavs team total under 121. I have the correct uh, play in that. And the over 121. Uh, Noops, of course, has the Spurs uh, in the first quarter plus two and a half. And Gafford over 18 and a half points and rebounds. Last game of our slate, we got the Nuggets versus the T Wolves. And of course, keep sending in those questions. We'll get to as many as we can. Appreciate everyone smashing that subscribe button, hitting the thumbs up, telling a friend. Uh, to uh, help grow the Bet US NBA Pick Show, but I'm going to call it a, a picks conversation because again, the chat keeps firing, keeps my brain uh, going, and I feel like I've come up with some some good angles and some good plays uh, just from uh, hearing what the wild chat today. Yeah, chat's all over the place, a lot of chatter. Uh, always appreciate that, and appreciate you guys mixing it up. Right now, over on BetUS, the Nuggets lane seven on the road in Minnesota. T Wolves plus 220 on the money line, total sitting at 213. I'm on the Nuggets here. Uh, you know, Nuggets coming off that, uh, that crazy loss. I think this is a bounce back spot for them, just big picture. And, you know, the Nuggets are pretty good in quote unquote play up spots. Like, I think they pick and choose when they're really going to go all in, uh, at least in this regular season. And, you know, Timberwolves are in the West. They need this. I, I think they realize as the season goes along, the Nuggets are like, yeah, we do want that uh, number one seed. We do want the home court. I think they're going to be up for this game. And, this just feels like a good time to fade this Timberwolves team. I mean, I, again, like it, it, after that game, the ant dunk, like uh, it, how do you get up again for this nuggets team? I, I just don't think they're going to have enough in the tank on this back to back spot. Like you just watch the game, the reaction, the game itself was probably much close. It, it clearly was a look ahead spot. And I think we talked about that, um, you know, in, in the, in, in the handicap, uh, and I, I think shark even had that of like that Timberwolves looking ahead towards this nuggets game, which they clearly were. And if you were on the jazz, that, that definitely was the right side of that play. Unfortunately, that, that crazy three at the end swung the result, but for the most part, the Timberwolves probably had to expend a lot more energy. Like I think they were planning on coasting realized, oh crap, we can't coast and get this victory. And now you got the nuggets coming into town. And I haven't seen him officially on the injury report, but I think we all saw uh, the same thing with that dunk of him dislocating of Ant dislocating his finger or at least jamming the finger up somewhat, uh, which I can't imagine is going to help them tonight. So I like the Nuggets. I mean, you could play them any way you want for me. Team total, first quarter, first half. I think they're all going to be look uh, pretty good overall. But I'll I'll just stick it out and take Nuggets with the game at minus seven. But how say you, Chris? Yeah, I'm on the same side as you, just a different different angle. Um, you know, I'm a little skittish about taking the Timberwolves, or I'm sorry, about taking the Nuggets full game here, just because the Timberwolves have been awfully feisty lately. Uh, you know, covering games, finding games, games uh, finding ways to win, even throughout all their injuries. But now they're heading into this game very banged up. Uh, obviously, Carl Anthony Towns won't be coming back. Rudy Gobert, I haven't heard about that, but he could miss his third game. And then yeah. Naz Reed got a head injury last night, and we know how... Uh, you know, serious, we're treating head injuries as we should in, in pro sports these days. So I doubt that Naz Reed, who's been a very important part of their Thank defense you. as a backup center, um, is probably not going to play. So now you have Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, who went 13 of 36. That's 36% from the floor against the Mavs the other night. Coming into this game, probably a little bit pissed off. And, you know, we talked about first quarters on this show already. Only the Celtics are better than the Denver Nuggets in the first quarter. 
Uh, Nuggets are 40, where is it? 43 and 25 for plus 14 units this season in the first quarter. That's obviously very, very good. And I think they're going to come out on fire tonight. They're also facing a Timberwolves team that, you know, they were on the road last night at Utah. Now they're going back home to Minnesota. That is a tough, tough spot. Uh, you know, less than 24 hours later to be playing against the champs, especially off a loss. So, you know, the Nuggets have only lost two games since the All-Star break, guys. I mean, this is a team that's been playing very well. They're coming off that loss. Um, I don't know full game because they haven't been a very good ATS team this year. They're like just above 40% against the spread full game. But give me the first quarter on Denver on the road. Yeah, no, it it's a little scary, I guess, full game. Uh, Cause they, they are getting these inflated lines, but uh, first quarter I, I do like as well. Noobs, how say you? Now look what you guys are talking about in terms of the Denver inflated lines, uh, just from a technical standpoint, a lot of times uh, books will relate spreads to money lines, money lines to spreads. And I think uh, Denver's a particularly tough team because uh, their money line should always be very high. They have a high percentage chance to win any one of these games, but the way that Nuggets play basketball, it's never really a blowout. If you go back and look, they're one of the better teams over the last couple of years, but when you start to dig into it, a lot of underlying uh, data, a lot of stuff that people use, it doesn't really go deep enough, doesn't look great because they just don't ever blow teams out for whatever reason. It seems to be they're happy to slow it down, just grind these games down to an end. There's no real reason to push these guys to play very hard to try to beat this team by 15, 20, 25 points. It's a lot like you know people say in baseball, never lay the one and a half because they only want to win by one, which is stupid, but I get what you're, you're kind of after there. Um, the, the Nuggets here again, kind of that same thing. I think it's hard for books to make the spread so small when the money line is so big, and you get to take advantage of that in the full game. But again, early on, I agree with Chris here. I think Nuggets' first quarter is a absolutely great look here you've got minnesota again off that ridiculous game i think edwards probably plays but even if he does it was a shooting hand again it looked like he dislocated that finger uh, i'm sure it'll be uh, better and okay i mean is anybody that's dislocated or hurt their finger you can get over that in 24 48 hours but there's still going to be swelling he's still going to feel it it should affect his shot if he plays tonight so i think this is a nice spot for denver i like him the first quarter i saw somebody floating in the chat asking about the possible trifecta here uh, again the full game number uh, kind of concerns me a little bit given the way that denver closes and from a first half perspective as good as the nuggets have been in the first quarter haven't been a great first half team a pretty good first half team overall but uh, you know just above 500 not a bad bet here in minnesota again a little better in kind of that larger sample size so just give me the nuggets first quarter we'll get this done and i can go to sleep before this game's even at halftime <laughs> and chris uh just fired in our group chat say pointing out that uh ant played um 38 minutes so again That's adding to yeah, it's like, and I didn't have the minutes. No, but just I test. It was like, man, the <laughs> this T Wolves team really had to had to do a lot to get that victory, and that's kind of why I could see them crashing um, late, maybe in the second half. But I I also like the first quarter. I and I see the concern with the full game, but I I do think the back to back spot will kind of hit them uh, late third, early fourth, and and Denver will end up cruising, but lock it up for me on the nuggets full game at minus seven and lock it up for Chris and noobs nuggets. First quarter lane two, kicking over to the question and answer portion of the program. First off, we got our boy, Russell. What's happening? Russell. He wants to know Kyrie under 25 and a half Charlotte plus 13 and a hook wizards plus nine and a hook. So let's see. I will, uh, I'll address the first one. Kyrie under 25 and a half. I, I, like I just said, I, I think there's something with this Ramadan and him being focused. Um, I, I would not be looking to, to take any unders on Kyrie Irving noobs. I'd be interested to see, does your, does your model have any, any thoughts here on Kyrie? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just trying to be muted. I don't know if anybody can hear my dog. He's very excited. Apparently something <laughs> is happening out there. Um, now, I, as you said, Sean, the Ramadan factor, I don't have that built into my model. I no. don't know how to model Ramadan. I guess maybe I'll have to go back after the show and see how Kyrie does during this period of time. And not to make light of Ramadan, it's it's a, a great thing. Um, hopefully everyone that is participating is, um, you know, doing Ramadan is doing well. But I have Kyrie right on his number. It's 25 and a half. I'm at 25. Uh, the problem really with this Spurs matchup is um, the Mavericks have kept minutes down for some of these stars in blowout games. So uh, if the Spurs again, we all I like them in the first quarter. I think they can keep this game close. But if the Mavericks can get to a double-digit lead by the third quarter here, you just might not see Kyrie get enough minutes. 
Yeah, that could be concern. Uh, and then he, you wanted to know about Charlotte and Wizards. Yeah, we kind of hit on that early. Uh, Chris, like the Rockets, if you want to go back and lay out a really good case, uh, Wizards are pretty banged up there as well. Charlotte felt consensus wise, I would say, no play, but uh, Noops likes the, 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 the Thomas over three and a half rebounds. It's just the number has gotten a little crazy with Charlotte, but Orlando, Orlando pretty good um, <laughs> at home. Ron Sizzle wants to know is LeBron James better than Michael Jordan? Well, we could do a we could do a whole uh, podcast series. I feel like on debating that question, um, but short answer no. Uh, Mandrake Falls, how do y'all feel about Joker? I love it. Over, tw- I mean, it's easy enough. <laughs> there is a case. I don't think, I don't think anyone's right. going to disagree I, with you there. Yes, I got a butt in here because. Jordan is the best player if we're talking about peak and we're talking about short-term periods of dominance. I think LeBron James at this point has unquestionably had a better career than Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan didn't play 20-plus years of consecutively of dominant basketball. It was a much shorter career. But again, if your life depended on a basketball game being played, you're taking Michael Jordan first. So Jordan is the better player, but... Just to give it a, a little bit of, uh, this is kind of, the, I've been practicing this because I get asked this question all the goddamn time. <laughs> uh, LeBron has had the better career at this point. And if I may chime in, because now I have to as well. Uh, you know, I, know obviously I should the open sh- this can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, it's a, it's an audience question, so we're yes, here to answer yes. it. Um, give the people what they want. You know, the, the short answer is no. I see what Alex is saying about the career, you know. I hear many a millennial generation Z, whatever the hell the generations are now, that have never seen Michael Jordan play and are talking about this stuff. If you were alive in the yeah. 90s and you saw this man play basketball, um, it was a different experience than anything anyone has ever seen before because he can truly take over the game. Like that saying that he had, I never lost, I just ran out of time. Like that's not completely just a quote that's that's like funny, you know, like there, there's something to it because it always felt like he could take over a game and he could win the game for the bulls. I haven't felt that throughout LeBron's entire career. He's a fantastic player. I can never say that he's better than Jordan though. Yeah. I mean, and also it, it's one of those ears questions where if, if Michael Jordan had maybe access to all the, uh, yeah, I don't want to accuse LeBron of anything, but like access to all the, the medical treatments that are available to LeBron, uh, that, you know, he has access to, to possibly extend his career and, and go on this crazy, insane run. Um, but to Noobs's point, I mean, you got to give uh, LeBron a ton of credit for how long he's been doing it and at such a high level. So uh, Jordan, that'd be, it, yes. And Jordan was scoring 50 points in games where there was only like 90 <laughs> points yeah, know, like on they, the team. Like this is, you know, had, it's a little bit different of an NBA. And they hadn't discovered the three point line. I mean, it was there, but they weren't, they weren't using it. And they weren't really the fouls, aware of it. Yeah, they the fouls used whole to be thing. lighter. You couldn't really see it. Yeah, it was. They ran over it. Uh, Mandrake Falls wants to know how do y'all feel about Joker over twenty five and a half points? And Jamal Murray, uh, thirty two and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Uh, yeah, Noops, how say you? I I I I don't want to look towards any unders uh, tonight on this Nuggets team, but uh, Noops, how say you? So I actually tend to lean towards unders here. I think this game could be a little bit ugly. Uh, The Nuggets on the road generally don't like to push pace. Minnesota has one of the best defenses in the NBA now. We have to see if Rudy Gobert is going to play tonight. That obviously has a big impact on it. But I tend to think this game is going to be a little bit uglier, and my model kind of bears that out. Um, I've got Jokic at about 23.5 points, so about two under that 25.5. Murray just trying to add up his points, rebounds, and assists here. I've got him at 20.5 points, which is right on his number, 4.8 rebounds, which is just slightly over, and 6.8 assists, which is right on his number of 6 and 6.5. So put them all together, that gives me about 31 and a half, almost 32. So I think that Murray number is pretty sharp and would actually lean towards under on Jokic. Any any thoughts on those two guys, uh, Chris? Yeah, I kind of agree with Alex here. The Nuggets have a reason to rest players, too, if they're um, ahead by a lot in this game, because they got some Pretty tough spots coming up. They got the Knicks at home, but that's a travel spot to go back home, and they have to go on the road again at Portland after that. It's just kind of a wonky week for them. Uh, so I would look at Jokic's points early in this game, maybe first quarter, which we know he plays the whole first quarter usually, uh, slash first half. That that probably makes more sense, because even if they are blowing them out by 20, he's going to keep on playing. He's going to keep on scoring. I would say the same thing for Jamal Murray. I mean, no, arguably no two players in the NBA on the same team 
can be counted on to improve after a really bad game that they had in that last you know, 13 for 36, uh, especially a bad shooting game for Jokic is almost unheard of. So yeah. I, I, I think that, you know, against the very poorest front, poorest front court in Dallas, by the way. Yeah, he's such an efficient guy. I, I don't see him not, you know, I, I do see him bounce back. I was going to double negative and I knew that would, that would, uh, noobs wouldn't let that fly. Uh, Russell in the chat wanting to know Minnesota to have more fouls than Denver. Uh, Russell's a maniac who's been betting uh, fouls. And I guess uh, some books list this prop market. Russell, I, you know, I told you yesterday. Who the hell is this, Russell? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I don't bet fouls. Yeah, I don't. Uh, and and feel free to DM us where you're where you're finding these. But uh, he had the Pistons fouls laying three and a half that cashed. Uh, he likes Minnesota to have more fouls in Denver. I mean, you know, the instant handicap without any uh, research on it is that Minnesota on the back to back. I think a little more tired. And when do you start fouling? When you're tired and lazy on defense, at least. Me personally, and I feel like some of these guys in the association as well. And and who's better? Yeah, I feel like Nuggets in general are good at figuring out ways to get to the line. So that's my two cents on on the fouls handicap without doing any sort of deep dive. I'm sure if you honestly, if you if you can find numbers on these, you might find some value because one, I I don't think a lot of people are betting into this market, and two, if you can get the referee data. Uh, prior to getting down on this, that's where you can really, you might be able to, I see a noobs eyes getting big, but I feel like that's where you might be able to find um, some edges here. Cause you know, some guys are with the tight whistle and, and some with the loose. And it seems like, especially post all-star game break, they've been letting them play. So uh, noobs, I'll say you any thoughts on uh, fouls in this game. Well, I will say, Sean, you make a great point about referees. And anybody who's modeling NBA totals without looking at the referees is doing it wrong. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, Some referees call the game differently than other referees. And I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon trying to figure this out. Russell, please DM me at underscore noops on Twitter. we got to talk about this. I want to get into this. I I have no idea where to even start. I'm not sure where there (laughs) is foul data. NBA has average personal fouls by team. The Pacers have the most fouls per game at 21 and a half. Um... Minnesota, let's see, what's their average? It's around 19.2. And Denver, if I had to guess the way Denver plays, they probably don't foul very much. No, they don't. They're about 18, which is the bottom half of the league. And I have no idea. I have no idea how they handicap this. I would say Minnesota probably has more fouls, simply just given how Denver is so averse to them stylistically. The way Jokic plays, it, it bothers a lot of people that he doesn't play a little more aggressively. What he's really trying to do is not foul people. So I would lean towards Minnesota, but that is a complete gut reaction. Fair. Chris, any, any foul thoughts in this matchup? Yeah. I mean, first of all, just to say when you're on these shows, uh, (laughs) there are obviously so many derivative bets that we can bet on, on a daily basis now in this world that I I do hope that our audience is understanding that we can't possibly have an angle on every one of these questions, (laughs) but we try to answer it as best we can. And I will say psychologically, um, you know, married to a psychologist, we have to think about this stuff a lot. You know, it it, it does kind of check out, right? Like, I think the Nuggets are going to be on the attack tonight. I think the Timberwolves are going to be tired. What do you do when you're tired? You just kind of reach your hands out there. Yeah. You know, you put in some lazy defensive effort. So, from a, a narrative psychological perspective, I think it actually does check out. I'm not going to bet on that, Russell. That's badass that you have an edge on that, and you probably do. You know, I I just recommend to our audience in general, like. The easiest way to find an edge on something is to hyper focus on that one bet, on that one type of bet, right? And just keep on looking at it. Uh, so you're doing a great job, Russell. Sorry I couldn't give you more information, but that's a very interesting angle, and it's probably the right one for tonight. Yeah, especially uh, a you know a market where there's probably not a lot of uh, a lot of other people in the market, and and probably creating yep. some inefficiencies. Uh, we could, we could dive deeper on that, but uh, next up we got Alvaro Santos. He wants to know what's your opinion on Jalen green scoring more than 22 and a half points and Kyrie Irving more than four and a half rebounds. Uh, Noobs, I'll let you kick this off. Any, any thoughts on Jalen green tonight? Yeah, it's point total. I'm looking at 26 and a half. Uh, so I don't know what this 22 and a half is. Maybe it's I've got to be 25. Yeah, I've got him at 25 points. So again, I have him under. And let me just see. I can actually tell you my price on 22 and a half. 
Uh, so Jalen Green over 22 and a half. I only make that minus 139. And my guess is the way that the market works on these, uh, you're not getting anywhere near that that price. Um, my guess is you're looking at minus 160, at least minus 170 on that. So again, as we like to say, every opportunity we get, do not buy points, not player prop points, not total game points, not spread points. Never. Don't buy points. Books know that you want to do this. They know that you're going to try to protect your guard against something happening, and they overcharge you on the way down. Almost always go the other way and try to sell. Uh, again, though, I've got Jalen Green going over 22.5 points about 58% of the time. That's minus 139, but again, have them under the number, so I don't really think that that's a great bet. Um, as far as rebounds and Kyrie Irving, that has been a pretty good look. He's been slightly over this number for a little while. I've got him at four. The total for the rebounds against four and a half, so you've got the right number there. I've got him at 4.9, just shy of five. So lean towards the over. Um, but again, if that's a little bit juicy, if you're looking at that in the minus 140, minus 150 range for that over, that's basically right where I have it. So I try to see if you can find a cheaper price, but lean to the over there on the rebounds. Yeah, and he played. Uh, let's see. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, yeah, he. I was looking at Kyrie's er, uh, last time they played against the Spurs. He had seven rebounds, and then he didn't play. And then uh, the first game opening night, he only had two rebounds. But I feel like uh, he was just going off shooting that that first game. So I, of those two, I kind of like the uh, the Kyrie four and a half rebounds a little bit more. Any any thoughts on the, those uh, plays, Chris? I kind of like Kyrie across the board. I do think yeah. that the Ramadan thing is working for him. I think Luca could sit out tonight. And, uh, you know, a lot of these high profile players or in quote stars, you know, they get a little, a little more motivated when they face Wemby. So maybe Kyrie is going to be looking to score and looking to get more rebounds. Um, I'll talk more about the Jalen Green one because I just don't think that the Rockets are going to have to have a lot of players score higher tonight. Yeah. And maybe look at somebody like Dylan Brooks who you know, likes to prey on these inferior teams. <laughs> you know, that's when he has his good games. But in that last game, which was only a few days ago uh, against the Wizards, the Rockets almost let that one get away from them. You know, they kind of played the style of play that the Wizards um, usually do out there. You know, 31 points to the Wizards in the first quarter, 38 points to the Wizards in the third quarter. So they just let it get away from them a little bit. I don't think Houston allows that in this game, especially with a depleted Wizards roster, and that means a, a lower scoring contest. So I, I don't like any overs in the Rockets game tonight. Yeah, uh, I think you're laying out a good case for that. Uh, Kyle in the chat saying, How are we feeling about Jalen Suggs over 13 and a half points and rebounds against the Hornets tonight, minus 125? That seems like free money. I mean, you know, Orlando at home. Uh, I, I like the spot overall, big picture. I I think the thirteen and a half is where it get got a little scary, as far as me just laying it. But I, they are good at home. Um, you know, Suggs. I'm looking at some of his his last uh, you know runs here with points and rebounds. Looks like it's fairly trending the over. I always I I I always get a little. Uh, weirded out lane minus 125 because obviously you you have to win those at a higher clip to to come out profitable but noobs how say you in particular on this Jalen Suggs matchup yeah, I think this is a nice look here. Um, uh, you know, this Charlotte team does not have a lot of great defensive guards. Uh, you know, Michich, a 30-year-old rookie from U Europe, really solid offensive player. I actually like watching him. He's a pretty good creator, but not a great defender. Trey Mann is okay, but I've got Suggs. His point total is 10 and a half. I've got him at 12 and a quarter. Um, rebounds so are basically right on the number there at three and a half. So maybe just play the points, but uh, I think there's a little bit of value in, in, in what you've got there. Yeah, I mean the num the the number I I at thirteen and a half points and rebounds. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, Kyle. That does seem kind of low. Uh, Chris, how say you? Any thoughts on Jalen Suggs tonight? Not really. I mean, love the thought, Kyle. Uh, that seems like free money is the part of it that's kind of red flagging it for me a little bit. No such thing in sports betting, but uh, this is a fairly good matchup for him. You know, the Hornets still do have some difficulty on the outside against these guys, and uh, Jalen Suggs could certainly get his at home, but. Other than that, no, no real angles or edges for me. Sounds about uh, sounds right. And let's close it out here uh, with the best bets. And we got a bunch of uh, free picks for you on the show. As always, Chris likes the Rockets lay nine and a half Mavericks team total under one twenty one, and nuggets in the first quarter. Uh, Noops also likes nuggets first quarter. I like, I do like nuggets first quarter, but officially on nuggets full game there at seven. I'm on the Mavericks team total over. 
Uh, and noobs has the wizards team total under one Oh nine, uh, cam Thomas over three and a half rebounds Pelicans first half minus four, which I also really like uh, Spurs first quarter plus two and a half and a uh, Gafford over 18 and a half points and rebounds. That'll do it for the bet us NBA picks show. And uh, what a show it was as always great to chop it up with you, Chris, where can people check you out? People can check me out at Farley bets on Twitter. And you know, I just, I think this world is just a little too nice recently. So let me just say, so let me just lay down the gauntlet here. I whooped Alex's it's ass done. twice, two seasons in a row on this show. <laughs> yes. Alex, I'm coming for you, baby. I did, you know, start, start tailing me audience. I'm telling you, I'm coming, I'm coming hot for Alex. I don't know if I can make it coming hot for Alex. That didn't sound right. Uh, but I am chasing <laughs> his record and it should be a good end of season uh, show here because I'm fired up for it. Yes. Uh, fired up down the stretch into the NBA playoffs. Our show is, and uh, so is the actual NBA noobs. Great to chop it up. I like the, uh, I like the pro wrestling uh, call out here by Chris. Uh, how say you and where can people check you? You beat me pretty comfortably last year, but the year before we were like one or two picks away from each other. So take your, you whoop <laughs> my butt two years in a row and just, just get out of here. It's ridiculous. And, and good luck, bud. Good luck catching up. What are you three games over 500? I'm almost at 20 games over 500. So we'll see how that goes. And you know what? I, that's all I have to say. Hey, Chris, uh. <laughs> uh, check him, check him out. Good at, one, uh, Alex. Good one. Underscore noops uh, on the X, aka Twitter. And you can check me out uh, there as well at Sean T. Green. Check out Sports Gambling Podcast, picking all the March Madness games against the spread. Uh, and of course, first half unders, uh, a lot of fun. Sports Gambling Podcast, check that out if you want more of me. And I'll see you I'll tomorrow you morning. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Really quick. I'm I'm stopping the end of the show. I'm really sorry, sure. guys. No, no. But no. for our for our audience, let's think of a bet that Alex and I can have. If if we get close Ooh. at a certain point, we need a a show bet of some kind. I already said I was going to shave my head if the Suns win the championship. They're not gonna. <laughs> uh, but um, I'm ready for Keep one my more. If someone wins the championship, kind. I can't remember who. All right. Well, let's yeah, just the- think of a bet if that if that if that comes up. All right. All right. I need to get a little closer, but yeah. I like that. I'll brainstorm on that as well. Good homework for the audience and uh, audience. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon east, on the Bet US NBA Pick Show for Chris. For noobs, I'm Sean, stacking the money green. Let it ride.